We can begin now. <coughs> Good afternoon and uh, Namaskar. Uh, I welcome everybody who is attending this webinar. Uh, ye webinar primarily bilingual hoga, Hindi or Angrezi dono mein, jaise bhi jisko suvida ho. Uh, the topic of the webinar is uh, should there be a collegium system for the appointment of election commissioners? Kya chunav ayukto kwe niyukti ke liye a collegium hona chahiye? Uh, basically, this is the uh, topic of the seminar, but I think we can cover uh, anything that comes to mind to the panelists. Uh, related to the appointment of election commissioners and the chief election commission commissioner. Uh, we have uh, three distinguished panelists. Uh, we were originally supposed to have four, but unfortunately one of our panelists has been taken ill and therefore we are left with only three. Uh, but as, as is often said, which is a cliche, it is the quality and not the quantity which matters. So, the first speaker would be Mr. T.S. Krishnamurthy, who is uh, a former Chief Election Commissioner. I happen to have known Mr. Krishnamurthy for a long time, ever since he became an Election Commissioner. And uh, he has the distinction of being the first uh, officer of the Indian Revenue Service, who became a Secretary to the Government of India and who became a Chief Election Commissioner. So, he has uh, a lot of experience in this matter of elections, election commission, and he obviously has, has had an insider view of what it takes to be an election commissioner and a chief election commissioner and uh, how are they appointed and so on and so forth. Our second speaker would be, uh, would bring the youth and the journalistic perspective. Ms. Ashwarya Paliwal, who is a principal correspondent at India Today and Aaj Tak. She's been in, in uh, the media business for about seven or eight years, and she has covered some very, very interesting and important issues and brought out a number of interesting stories. And uh, our uh, third speaker is a distinguished parliamentarian whom I am sure आप सब लोगों ने उनको पार्लियामेंट में काफी धुआंधार तरीके से बोलते सुना होगा हालांकि आज उनकी तबीयत ठीक नहीं है लेकिन फिर भी वो आज आ गए हैं इट इज वेरी नाइस ऑफ प्रोफेसर मनोज झा प्रोफेसर झा इन एडिशन टू बीइंग अ वेरी वेरी इफेक्टिव पार्लियामेंटेरियन एसेंशियली इज एन एकेडमिक ही इज अ प्रोफेसर एंड द हेड ऑफ डिपार्टमेंट इन द दिल्ली स्कूल ऑफ सोशल वर्क so I have known him as an academic and now as a politician. So it is my my pleasure and privilege to to uh, welcome all three panelists. Uh, let me give a little brief about uh, the topic. जो लोग आज इस वेबिनार में उपस्थित हैं, उनमें से मेरे ख्याल में काफियों को याद होगा कि थोड़े दिन पहले ही सुप्रीम कोर्ट में इस मामले को लेके एक केस चला था। जिसमें एडीआर ने एक पटिशन फाइल की हुई थी इलेक्शन कमिश्नर्स के अपॉइंटमेंट के बारे में उसमें हमारी डिमांड यही थी कि एक कॉलेजियम होना चाहिए क्योंकि जैसे अभी अपॉइंटमेंट होता है जिसमें सरकार अपनी मर्जी से अपॉइंटमेंट करती है हालांकि टेक्निकली तो प्रेसिडेंट को अपॉइंट करना होता है लेकिन वो कैबिनेट जो भी उनको रिकमेंडेशन देते हैं उसको अप्रूव कर देते हैं आ, बड़ी इंटरेस्टिंग बात एक वो हुई थी कि जब उस केस की सुनवाई हो रही थी उसी बीच में एक इलेक्शन कमिश्नर की अपॉइंटमेंट हो गई तो दैट मेड दैट हियरिंग क्वाइट इंटरेस्टिंग बिकॉज देर वॉज अ केस इन पॉइंट विच एड जस्ट हैपन वाइल दी हेयरिंग वॉज ऑन एंड दैट प्रोवाइडेड ए सिग्निफिकेंट इम्पेटस एंड इम्पोर्टेंट टू दैट हेयरिंग तो ये इलेक्शन कमिश्नर की अपॉइंटमेंट का जो मुद्दा है वो 
इसलिए पैदा हुआ कि पिछले कुछ सालों से देर हैव बीन रिपोर्ट्स एंड देर इज अ व्यू इन सर्टन सेक्शंस ऑफ सोसाइटी एंड द कंट्री दैट द इलेक्शन कमीशन डज नॉट सीम टू बी फंक्शनिंग इन द वे इट हैड फंक्शन इन द पास्ट व्हेन इट वाज सीन टू बी एब्सोल्युटली न्यूट्रल एंड नॉन पार्टिसन as the saying goes uh, it is not enough to be honest but one should also appear to be honest and the election commission is in a very very important uh, position as a constitutional authority where it is expected that the election commission should not only be uh, non partisan and neutral it should also appear to be neutral so us cheez ko leke there have been uh, a significant amount of discussion and debate and doubt and uh, that is why the petition was filed and that is how the hearing happened so i will i will stop my introductory remarks at this point and i will request mr t s krishnamurthy to share his views on this topic with us uh, mr krishnamurthy please uh, very good afternoon to professor saab chukar saab and other co panelists as well as members of the audience may I first thank you for inviting me to participate in this discussion but i hold the view and i have always held the view that any important matters whether it is appointment or, or any other activity in public offices it always good to have more than one head to decide the issue so when we were all appointed or when i was appointed it was normally the prime minister probably in consultation with his ministers they send a recommendation to the to the president and the president approves the appointment well i hold the view that it should be a collegium i have no doubts on that it only really increases the credibility of the system it is not that one has a you know big question mark on a particular appointment though there are many who have raised issues about a particular appointment or other but uh, my view is always to improve the credibility of uh, an appointment it is better that a collegium sits over it and a collegium which would probably include the nominee of the chief justice the uh, my leader of the opposition and the prime minister as the case may be but um, of late there has been some criticism not only about the appointment but also about the tenure of the appointment of the chief election commissioner you remember that one of the judges of the supreme court remarked whether a short term tenure for a cec is okay or not and he had some serious doubt about short tenures wherein that i did the try uh, say i did come on the tv as well as in the media print media to say that an election commissioner is appointed for a period of 6 years or up to the age of 65 and he gets a training ground for some time as an election commissioner and becomes the chief election commissioner and he is only the first among the equals so this such an appointment whether it is chief election commissioner or election commissioner he should be seen to be neutral as mr professor chakkar was mentioning not only be neutral but also seen to be neutral and uh, for this purpose you don't have to link it to the tenure i agree the tenure longer tenure may be helpful but it doesn't mean a shorter tenure of a chief election commissioner will reduce the credibility of the institution so i in my initial remark would be yes there should be a collegium and as far as possible make it more credible so that people and the political parties have faith in the system thank you thank you mr krishnamurthy that was uh, that was short and sweet uh, i will now request uh, uh, ms ashwarya parivall to share her views ms parivall please i don't see her on the screen uh while we wait so for ms parivall so we are trying to connect with her okay shall i uh, professor jha would you like to aap apna yeah. baat karna chahenge uh, i i think <clears throat> can you hear me <laughs> yes of course uh thank you uh krishnamurthy ji 
Indeep Jokarji and others. Uh, you know, uh, I think he has set the agenda, the, the spirit in which we should talk. Recently, I was uh, in a meeting called by Election Commission. They were, demo they were supposed to demonstrate uh, a remote voting machine. Uh, the meeting was for demonstration, <clears throat> but uh, almost all political parties, and I say when I'm almost all, almost all political parties had so much of questions that they had to defer that demonstration probably forever. The questions were about the integrity. The questions were about the credibility. If there are so many questions, even from the supposedly friendly parties, of BJP, that's the signal that I won't even say all is not well. Nothing seems to be well. The parliamentary democracy in India, the pivot is election commission. If the credibility in the election commission is gone, parliamentary democracy is simply as one skeleton. You can bury it anytime you wish to. And when I say this, there is a pattern. I don't know whether Collegium shall be able to address it. There are questions, but I agree with uh, uh, Krishna Murthy ji that when there are more than one heads, even if the heads have similarities of views, when they collectively decide, collective decision is any time better, carries the credibility quotient at a higher level, then an individual deciding, as one case you said, while the Supreme Court was hearing, the appointment took place. Now, there are a couple of instances when election dates are supposed to be announced for a particular state. On three occasions, I have found the ruling party member have given a date much before the announcement of the election commission. And the date, dates matched when the election commission subsequently announced the dates. Somebody called it coincidence. I, in democracy such coincidences are actually dangerous so i my my limited argument as a member of parliament and i have seen it that the biggest crisis facing election committee com uh, commission today is the crisis of credibility and this is one crisis if we do not address it impartially impartial impartially dispassionately probably at the end of the day, we'll have that skeleton which we referred to, which I referred to, that the skeleton of parliamentary democracy. And this worries me. I may not be a member tomorrow, but parliamentary democracy in India, the roots shall be decimated. So it's it's time. If I hope if these kind of webinars probably reach the election commission also, because the biggest mandate and the only mm. mandate we have under Article 324, is holding free and fair election. That nowhere says that you are the custodian of uh, a machine. You are a custodian of free and fair election. You are a custodian of level playing field. And both these ideas have been decimated, I won't say, uh, particularly in eight, nine years. There is a predictability of pattern. There is, a, there is people make head speeches. Election Commission remains silent. So when you say free and fair, I don't only buy that argument, money. Violence in language also, and acceptability of that uh, language in viol uh, linguistic violence also uh, kills the idea of free and fair election. We just have to look back and see in last eight, nine years, fear and anger both manipulated fear and manipulated anger have traveled with average voters to the polling booth. This certainly is not an idea of free and fair election. I just wish to stop here and so I'll join. Thank you, uh, Krishnamurti ji, Indeep ji, and Ashwarya and all other panelists for inviting me here. I'll <coughs> join in at any point of time. Thank you, Professor Jha. I, I really appreciate that your health and your health has been lost. I have told you that you are just 
दो तीन पॉइंट ही रखेंगे आपने फिर भी अपना व्यू काफी अच्छे तरीके से रखा बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद कैन आई राव रिक्वेस्ट मिस ऐश्वर्या पालीवाल टू शेयर हर व्यू मिस पालीवाल प्लीज कैन यू हेयर अस आई कैन हेयर यू सर यू नो देर आर टू थ्री थिंग्स इन दिस एक चीज तो ये कि जैसा हम पुलिस वगैरह के लिए भी कहते हैं ना सर के देखिए ये लोग सोसाइटी से ही आते हैं दे कैन सी वॉट इज है सो एनी वन हु बिकम्स इधर इलेक्शन कमिश्नर और द चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर दे आर नॉट पीपल यू नो हु आर नॉट अंडरस्टैंडिंग द गेम दैट इज बींग प्लेड और कई बार शायद ऐसा होता है कि द फियर दैट एवरी वन हैज वो इतना ज्यादा बढ़ जाता है दैट दैट फियर एट टाइम्स आपको कई बार जो आप सोचते हैं कि इस तरीके से यू नो यू विल ब्रिंग अबाउट चेंज मे बी दैट फियर ऑफ यू नो थिंग्स हैपनिंग टू यू और योर फैमिली और मे बी एम्बिशन दो समथिंग्स जो कई बार आपको क्लाउड आपका जो जजमेंट होता है उसको uh, किया जाता है देखिए अगर हम कई सारे ऐसे फॉर्मर सी जी आईज हैं बहुत सारे लोग ऐसे बहुत बड़े बड़े औहदों पर थे वेन दे स्टेप डाउन यू नो द काइंड ऑफ पोस्ट बेनिफिट पोस्ट रिटायरमेंट बेनिफिट दैट दे गॉट तो कई बार बैठ के वॉट इज इट दैट दे वॉन्ट टू डू फॉर अ लॉर्ड ऑफ अबाउट लेगेसी दैट यू नो वी वॉन्ट टू लीव दैट लेगेसी बट आई थिंक सर ओवर द पास्ट मेनी इयर्स आई थिंक डेकेड बाई डेकेड अलॉट चेंज तो जो फिफ्टी सिक्सटी सेवेंटीज के जो पॉलिटिशियंस थे और जो उनकी एक इच्छा थी सही में लोगों के लिए कुछ करने की और हम आज की अगर पॉलिटिशियंस देखें 90s, 80s की अगर बात करें 80s, 90s, 2000 की सो आई थिंक बहुत बड़ा एक चेंज आ गया है जो चेंज हमें कमीशन में भी कहीं ना कहीं रिफ्लेक्ट मतलब वो चेंज रिफ्लेक्ट करता है आई थिंक इट्स अ वेरी सिस्टमैटिक चेंज दैट हैज हैपन एंड नो डाउट एवरीवन हु कम द नॉट मेजोरिटी हमें कंपेयर नहीं करना चाहिए कि पहले क्या होता था और अब में आई थिंक कहीं ना कहीं कोई भी बंदा जो बहुत पावरफुल पोजिशन पे बैठा है उसके दिमाग में ये तो आता है कि भाई साहब ये जो पॉलिटिशियंस हैं या ये जो पार्टी है ये वोट में जो के साथ आई है तो मतलब हम एक उखाड़ लेंगे आई थिंक ये इसमें इंस्टीट्यूशन को एड करते हैं आप भयंकर तरीके से डिसकनेक्टेड है दे डू हैव दिस फीलिंग कि अरे हम क्या कर लेंगे तो ये तो तो देन मतलब आई थिंक इवन दैट सिस्टम इज नॉट फुल इसमें बहुत सारे होंगे और कितना रेजिस्टेंस है तो हो भी सकता है कि उतना ही रेजिस्टेंस कमीशन की तरफ से भी आए पालीवाल आपकी बात आप पूरी हो गई आपकी जी जी जी, जी, जी कुछ प्रॉब्लम नहीं नहीं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद तो अच्छा थैंक यू वेरी मच ये अभी तक तो ये वेबिनार दूसरे वेबिनारों से इस मामले में थोड़ा फर्क है कि सारे पार्टिसिपेंट्स ने अपनी बात काफी जल्दी खत्म कर दी वो बड़ी अच्छी बात है तो मैं इस टाइम का थोड़ा सा फायदा उठाना चाहता हूँ मेरा ये तो खैर हो गया तीनों पार्टिसिपेंट्स ने पैनलिस्ट ने बताया है कि कॉलेजियम होना चाहिए लेकिन उसके साथ साथ ये भी हुआ कि कॉलेजियम में भी शायद कुछ कमियां हो और उनको भी दूर करने का कुछ तरीका सोचना चाहिए तो मैंने कुछ दिन पहले ये 22 दिसंबर को मेरा एक आर्टिकल छपा था हिंदू में उसमें मैंने जो सजेशन दिए थे वो कॉलेजियम से भी थोड़ा सा आगे बढ़ के कहना चाहिए या कॉलेजियम से थोड़ा फ़र्क है मैंने उसमें ये लिखा था कि जैसा कि सुप्रीम कोर्ट के हेरिंग में भी कहने को सुनने को मिला 
कि ऐसे लोगों को इलेक्शन कमिश्नर और चीफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर होना चाहिए जो अपने पद या अपने अहदे की जो शपथ लेते हैं दे शुड स्टैंड ट्रू टू दैट ओथ ऑफ ऑफिस एंड नॉट बी वर्ड अबाउट एनीथिंग एल्स बेस्ड ऑन माय एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ हैविंग वर्क विद द इलेक्शन कमीशन फॉर नाउ आई थिंक अबाउट more than 20 years 23 or so uh, i feel that the tenure issue is not unimportant if a person is guaranteed a tenure of 6 years either as an election commissioner or as a chief election commissioner or both uh, it's it, it stands to reason in my mind that that person will be more confident in in what uh, she or he does the other issue of course which we have not touched and uh, rightly so because it is not part of the topic of the webinar is the difference in the service conditions of election commissioner than the chief election commissioner uh, as i think most of us know the chief election commissioner has a constitutional protection uh, that he or she cannot be removed unless through a uh impeachment process like that of uh, supreme court judges whereas the election commissioners can be uh, removed from office with a recommendation by the chief election commissioner etc etc there are also one or two other issues now keeping these in mind and more than these keeping in mind that the election process is the absolute fundamental for a democracy the election commission should be given a place of pride in our constitutional scheme because unless the electoral process is not uh, fair it is not free it is and it should also have the confidence of people as professor ja said there is a there is a issue of credibility so keeping all this mind i think the appointment of election commissioners should become a concern of the parliament itself uh, the suggestions that i had made are as follows i had suggested that a committee of parliament be set up tasked with listing down the requirements and uh, expectations of the position of election commissioners and chief election commissioners now this is because today uh, when uh, we look at the the history of the election commission over the last 70 plus years actually 73 75 plus because the election commission came into being before the republic came into being uh the history tells us that it has been uh, senior bureaucrats uh, bureaucrats who are near retirement and more often than not uh, members of the indian administrative service have been election commissioners and chief election commissioners and also the process of people being appointed as election commissioners and then be in the chief election commissioner is also a carry over from the from the bureaucracy so my suggestion was that a committee of parliament should lay down the qualifications experience expectations of election commissioners and chief election commissioners and this committee should uh, submit its recommendations to the parliament and these requirements should be accepted only if two thirds of the members present and voting agree with them now the requirement of two third is because uh, a simple majority is uh, is manageable uh, in the numerical democracy the kind that we have but a two third majority will per force uh, give the opposition parties a say in the matter and such a listing of qualifications experience and expectations would have much wider acceptance 
and once the parliament has approved these then that committee stands dissolved and either a fresh committee or an existing committee of parliament be tasked with uh, looking for candidates for uh, positions of election commissioner and chief election commission uh, based on these requirements and this committee should uh, invite applications from whoever wants to apply and they should look through these candidates uh, come up with a short list and a recommendation which should again be put to the parliament and recommendation should be considered approved by parliament also if two thirds of the members present and voting approve them and then these recommendations should go to the president for uh, final appointment in this process uh, there is also one more uh, proviso that i had suggested that any person appointed to the position of either election commissioner or chief election commissioner should uh, stay in their position for 6 years or up to the age of 75 years whichever is earlier and to make sure that a person so appointed has at least 6 years uh, the proposal was anybody who is above the age of 69 should not be appointed so that any person who is appointed will have at least 6 years now on the face of it this process may seem uh, cumbersome complicated uh, how do we get two third majority in the parliament and so on and so forth but i think given the importance of the election commission as the as the basic fulcrum of democracy in the country i think it is worth Uh, the countries and the societies while to go through this troublesome process so that the questions of credibility of the election commission do not arise uh i uh, this uh, proposal that i had made in my piece in the hindu was not put to the court because at that time it had not been uh, conceptualized it occurred to me subsequently and uh, i would uh, request the the three panelists to comment on this proposal and any other comments they wish to make after which we will open the the floor to questions by, from the audience uh, so may i request mr krishnamurthy to react to this and to add anything else that you wish to sir uh thank you very much uh, professor saab first of all uh, well, i in principle i have no objection to your proposal but from the practicality point of view from the point of view of time consumption in the selection process i feel it may be too time consuming for the appointment for example if an appointment is to be made all these processes may have to be initiated even one year before the due date now for example let us assume one of the election commissioners either dies or retires in the course of his service you cannot foresee this you may have to uh, then start the process of appointment it will take one year and that may not be a desirable state of affairs my suggestion is yes the the parliamentary approval system yes there are it is in practice in many countries if that is what you feel it should be there what i would suggest is the so called collegium can prepare a panel of names maybe 3 or 5 and then ask for the approval of the parliament but my own feeling is personally speaking from the point of view of practical implementability aspect of it we should try first the collegium system if it is not satisfactory we may have to go through the process that you have said with the approval of the parliament i strongly believe that we still have a although there may be uh, some exceptions of the collegium failing in its responsibility i still believe that it is worth trying for some time because the practicality and the time aspect of the appointment is concerned it is better to go that and keep it to the minimum uh, uh, selection process the second point i want to say is that there is no <coughs> unif- there is no uniformity in the in the uh, before that i'll, I'll comment on the age 
Although you have suggested 75 as the age of retirement, you have to bear in mind that it has to be in consonance with the, the age of retirement or superannuation for Supreme Court judges because they have always held the view that it cannot have a different terms of appointment. So if you are changing the age of retirement, maybe the Supreme Court may have its own <coughs> view. They may not, they may not uh, probably agree to this. In any case, it may not be absolutely necessary now. I, I feel 65 is good enough, or if you want, you can make it 70 maximum. The other point I want to say is about the removal procedure. As you said, the chief election commissioner is removed only by impeachment. The other election commissioners are not. Now, this is because the legacy of the past. In the constitution, there is a provision for appointment of election com as many election commissioners as possible. At that time, probably the intention was that there will be regional temporary election commissioners when a particular state goes for election and then that, that election commissioner uh, terms ends with the election. But now it has been changed with an amendment during Mr. Narasimha Rao's period. Now that you have got three election commissioners and the principle of majority will apply in the matter of decision making. And that the, all the three election commissioners are of equal rank. The removal in respect of the remaining two election commissioners should also be kept on par with the chief election commissioner. I have suggested this during my tenure time. And I have written about it in my book and other articles. There are other commissions have also recommended, the inquiry commission. It's very unfortunate that this aspect seems to have been totally ignored by, for the past 20, 20, more than 20 years, this has been in a discussion. And it has no party value at all. It has to be brought on fast. And I, I see why there is, there is so much of indifference on the part of any party. Even the, uh, the parties kind of should not have, have not raised this issue. I, I find the manifesto of political parties doesn't mention anything about electoral reforms. I feel very, very pained to see that the indifference of the various parties in the matter of election reforms. I think uh, I have conveyed my views on the points raised by you. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Krishnamurti. That's that's very helpful. Uh, Professor Jha, aap kuch kahenge iske baare mein? Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> let me let me begin by endorsing the last part of uh, what uh, Krishnamurti ji said that electoral reforms, most of the political parties are conspicuously silent, and this silence uh, actually does not augur well with the health of democracy. <clears throat> so uh, I was listening to. Krishnamurti ji also, and your idea and his response on your idea. I'm not able to decide where do I stand. But when you said a parliamentary committee, uh, and you refer to two-third majority in both the house, I must tell you, your uh, views are ideal for an ideal democratic setup. So, uh, what do? how do you deal with a majoritarian parliament? I'm not meaning majority in parliament. A parliament which thinks Majority has given them the license to bulldoze anything that we call majority in parliament. The world has experienced it earlier. We are also experiencing it. We had a brief experience during the late 70s. <clears throat> now, my worry is so that in the upper house, that is the council of states, still the ruling party does not have that kind of majority. What they have in uh, the lower house, that is Lok Sabha. I have a fear that if such bills come, such proposition come, they'll bring it as a money bill. What do you do then? They'll simply say, because it means pay, uh, payment and perks to the members of election commission, so it is, please be treated as a money bill under article 110 or whatever. Now, we need to, you know, a strategy in one phase may not be a very good strategy in another phase. So, and, and this is one issue where all political parties and civil society need to come together. When they come together, they'll probably have a kind of platform where what Krishnamurti ji said, that electoral reforms shall be needed. I mean, apart from, as I said, I repeat, money, threat, 
more than that what i worries me today is the polarization now with that kind of polarization and we still call it free and fair election because we factored in only the influence of money some money is seen currency notes are seen they are captured probably the capture is for one not for the other or not in the same quantum but these are the factors what i refer to as management of anger manipulation of anger manipulation of manufacturing and manipulating fear i think a a, a vibrant democracy needs to find collective answer to these otherwise sir we'll we'll lose the plot that's what i wanted to say thank you sir Uh, if I can interfere, intervene, yes, uh, sir. Professor Saab, I only want to say I entirely agree with Professor Ja, saying that anger, hatred, uh, hate speech, and so on, they do affect the free and fair election process. I have no doubts about it. Unfortunately, we have not found a good answer to meet these uh, problems of man, uh, uh, election process. I do not know whether. the existing model code of conduct is adequate to deal with this situation professor ja please continue no no i am over i am done sir <coughs> so ms paliwal would you like to add something to what has been said in response to my proposals and anything else well it seems we have lost the connection with uh, ms paliwal yes sir we have we are, uh, i'm trying to connect with her again uh in the meanwhile uh, professor jha and uh, mr krishna murthy uh my proposals are certainly ideal i agree with that and uh, uh, i constantly have this uh, struggle that what is doable is sometimes not the most appropriate thing because it's uh, what is doable is already happening so we need to at least set our sights rather ambitious and then maybe in while trying to achieve that ambitious goal we perhaps are a little short but we should move significantly from the present anyway we can discuss this later we have ms paliwal back with us yes ms paliwal would you like to sorry sir bye so actually i would you know like to say ek most of the opposition parties are probably lagli with so the point that uh, people have been raising is about the evm i have covered not many a couple of elections and i don't think uh, you know it's the the problem is with the machine the problem is always with the man or the woman behind the machine and we all know what happens in that last half an hour of elections like we have seen it we know it uh, we know relatives who are not there still you know somehow their votes get counted there are people who you know there are bogus votes all those things do happen but i very seriously think all the other parties the opposition parties apart you know it's very easy to point fingers and say that the majlis professor talked about the majority uh, but i also still think in the respective states do they actually want some kind of reforms to take place what manage really on if elections in the state say the big elections the lok sabha elections do deeply state i personally do things so. and i think everyone is very comfortable the way things are till the time it does not hurt you jab tak mere ghar mein aake कोई माता कहते हैं कि तुम मेरे आज आगे वाले को जलाओ पीछे वाले को जलाओ इट्स अ वेरी इंडियन जजेस forces to appoint these for the basing ashwarya ji aapki connectivity mein kuch issue hai 
आपकी बात पूरी सुनाई नहीं दे रही है बीच बीच में कट रही है तो मेरे ख्याल में आप जब तो तक आपकी कनेक्टिविटी थोड़ी ठीक हो जाए मे बी आप दोबारा से लॉग इन करेंगे तो शायद ठीक हो जाएगी दोबारा लॉग इन करो जी तब तक हम प्रोफेसर झा के व्यूज लेते हैं प्रोफेसर झा आप कुछ कहना चाह रहे थे नहीं मैं पालीवाल जी को मैं सुन नहीं पाया ऐश्वर्या जी को आ, आ, वो मैं हाँ एक, एक चीज जो उन्होंने कही विच आई अग्री एक तो जो कृष्णा मूर्ति जी वाली बात है उसको उन्होंने भी दोहराया कि हम अपने अपने रेस्पेक्टिव स्टेट्स में देखिये स्टेट्स में इलेक्ट्रल रिफॉर्म रिफॉर्म्स का डोमेन बड़ा रेस्ट्रिक्टिव है लिमिटेड है जितनी मेरी समझ बनी है इतने वर्षों में लेकिन दूसरी बात जो उससे ज्यादा महत्वपूर्ण है आई मीन फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ कृष्णा मूर्ति जी आई शुड स्विच ओवर इन हिंदी और सर कैन यू आई आई कैन फॉलो हिंदी नो प्रॉब्लम ओके ओके सर सो व्हाट आई वांटेड टू कन्वे दैट इट्स आल्सो टाइम फॉर पॉलिटिकल पार्टीज टू ब्रिंग बैक इलेक्ट्रल रिफॉर्म्स एंड देयर आर प्लेथर ऑफ एब्सोल्युटली एंड अ प्लेथर ऑफ इश्यूज टू बी एड्रेस्ड नंबर 1 सर नंबर 2 आई आज little could i make from ashwarya ji is that how do we i am not my party is not against machine per se again the question is of credibility now you at one point you say stand alone machine hai dusre bar kehte hai ki nahi iske sath ek wo juda hua hai abhi jaise hamari choti si khwahish hai ki why can't you have number of bp bb pads which are counted it should be the quantum should be increased the percentage should be increased and in case of even 0.5% discrepancy only bb pad should be counted and not the machine counting should take place number one if if we are able to make these kind of say small steps in our electoral democracy it will restore the faith let's not forget the party which is appearing as the greatest defender of the machine today was the party who's one of the greatest leaders wrote a foreword to a book on how evm machines are used to rig elections now because i mean i know defeat gives you different reasons to ponder over machine also comes one but in our scheme of things machine is at the back but we time and again ask election commission that look you are accountable to 324 article 324 you are not accountable to a machine to to defend that machine whether it is made in india or in europe or in timbuktu that's why our insistence of late is on vv pat count and if that is done i think it 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 would amount then say time taking so jitne bade bade log hain sabke ghar pe note ginne ki machine lagi hui hai saab wo machine lagwa dijiye na नोट गिन सकता है तो वोट भी गिन लेगा और बड़ी आसानी से हो सकती है ये चीजें तो ये छोटी छोटी चीजें हैं बट द फंडामेंटल थिंग विच आई टेक अवे फॉर मी आर टू थिंग्स वन व्हाट यू सेड जगदीप जी रिगार्डिंग योर आर्टिकल इन हिंदू एंड सेकंड वन व्हाट कृष्णा मूर्ति जी इज सेड दैट आर साइलेंस ऑन इलेक्ट्रल रिफॉर्म्स ग्रेजुअली आर सीन आफ्टर नाइनटीन बिगिनिंग फ्रॉम द एट्थ डिकेट no political party is talking about electoral reforms of whatever nature so unless we talk about it solutions won't come and that's that's where i i stop in this way thank, thank you, you professor jha professor jha mere jo keh rahe the haan ji wo that was just only ke pehli baat to jo parties hain kya wo apne rajya ke andar hi chahti hain ki bahut zyada electoral reform ho sabse pehla जो वहाँ की मेन पार्टी है जैसे अगर हम बंगाल की बात करें तो वहाँ पे टीएमसी है तो क्या ममता बनर्जी खुद चाहेंगी उनकी स्टेट में बहुत फेयर इलेक्शन हो क्या सपा चाहेगी कि उत्तर प्रदेश में बहुत फेयर इलेक्शन हो देखिए बहुत आसान होता है जब हम ऑपोजिशन में होते हैं ये कहना कि फेयर इलेक्शन नहीं हो रहा है लेकिन यही फिर सवाल आता है कि अगर हम अपने अपने स्टेट्स में उतने कॉन्फिडेंट नहीं है तो जब हम बात सामने जाके रखेंगे तो हर आदमी जो है वो पलट के यही कहेगा कि अब क्योंकि लोकसभा का चुनाव है तो आपको ये याद आ रहा है जब स्टेट का चुनाव था तब आप उतने जोर से नहीं बोल रहे थे दूसरी बात सर दिस अनफॉर्चुनेटली पावर करप्ट एब्सोल्यूट पावर करप्ट कंप्लीटली और जो ये बात थी सर कि यू नो वी शुड मेक श्योर हु सिट्स ऑन द सीट सर वी डोंट नो हाउ ही और शी विल रियक्ट वन ही और शी सिट्स ऑन द सीट 
क्योंकि जब तक पार मिलती नहीं है तब तक लोग बहुत अलग तरीके से बिहेव करते हैं हम सबने अपनी जिंदगी में देखा होगा हमारा कोई ना कोई रिलेटिव कोई ना कोई दोस्त बहुत अलग से हमसे बात करता है लेकिन जैसी पार आ जाती है पीपल कम्प्लीटली चेंज कोलेजियम की बात करें तो सर आप लोग क्या चाहते हैं कि फॉर्मर सी सी डिसाइड करें कि नहीं सी सी कौन बनेंगे देन देर शुड बी अ प्रॉपर फॉर्मेट अगर हम कोलेजियम की बात करते हैं तो कि अगर हम कोलेजियम की बात कर रहे हैं तो फिर एग्जैक्टली exactly कौन होगा वो जो इन लोगों को चुन के लाएगा और आप हम मतलब आई थिंक इट्स अ लिटिल डिफिकल्ट टू से हु विल बिकम अ वेरी गुड सी नहीं इफ आई मे इफ आई मे एड मिस पालीवाल कॉलेजियम की जो प्रपोजल है उसमें इनिशियल थॉट्स तो यही थे कि प्राइम मिनिस्टर लीडर ऑफ द अपोजिशन एक कोई जुडिशरी का चीफ जस्टिस ऑफ इंडिया का रिप्रेजेंटेटिव जैसे कि कॉलेजियम्स डायरेक्टर सीबीआई वगैरह के लिए बनाए जाते हैं वैसे ही बनाए जाए इनिशियल थॉट यही है उसमें जैसा कि कृष्णमूर्ति जी ने एक हिंट दिया था कि हमारे पास कॉलेजियम का एक्सपीरियंस है उसमें कभी कभी कुछ ठीक काम नहीं हुए हैं लेकिन उसको अभी और ट्राई करना चाहिए उसको इम्प्रूव करना चाहिए तो कॉलेजियम में ये तो नहीं है कि जैसे जुडिशरी में होता है कि जजिस जजों को चुनते हैं ये तो मेरे ख्याल में किसी ने कहा नहीं है और मेरे ख्याल में ना ही कोई कहेगा कि एग्जिस्टिंग इलेक्शन कमिश्नर बैठ के अगले इलेक्शन कमिश्नर का चुनाव करें वो तो मेरे ख्याल में उम्मीद है ना हो लेकिन आप कहते हैं कि आजकल सब कुछ मुमकिन है पता नहीं क्या भी हो जाए लेकिन उसकी उम्मीद नहीं है बट दी आइडिया वॉज दैट दी प्राइम मिनिस्टर और दी लीडर ऑफ द अपोजिशन एंड दी रिप्रजेंटेटिव ऑफ द चीफ जस्टिस एक्सेट्रा ये प्रपोजल थी क्योंकि उस प्रपोजल में भी कुछ दिक्कतें महसूस आई थी उसी के बारे में सोचने के बाद मैंने जो अपनी बात बताई थी वो मैंने की थी दूसरी बात मैं ये कहना चाहता हूँ कि हमारी डिस्कशन जैसा कि अक्सर होता है हालांकि फोकस होना था कि इलेक्शन कमिश्नर्स की नियुक्ति के लिए क्या कॉलेजियम होना चाहिए ये सवाल था उस सवाल को मैंने ही थोड़ा सा ब्रॉड बेस्ड किया एक कॉलेजियम से बाहर का सोल्यूशन प्रपोज करके लेकिन मैं अपने डिफेंस में ये कह सकता हूँ कि मैंने भी सिर्फ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर्स की अपॉइंटमेंट के बारे में बात की थी लेकिन हमारी चर्चा अब फैल के पूरे इलेक्ट्रल रिफॉर्म पे चली गई है जो कि मेरा बड़ा पसंदीदा टॉपिक है लेकिन इस वेबिनार के लिए मैं ये सबसे रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि हम वापस इलेक्शन कमिश्नर्स की अपॉइंटमेंट पे फोकस करें और हमें अगर किसी को अपने कोच क्लोजिंग रिमार्क्स उस पर देने हैं तो अभी दे लें उसके बाद हम क्वेश्चन लेने शुरू करेंगे एंड माय रिक्वेस्ट इज लेट अस कम बैक एंड फोकस ऑन अपॉइंटमेंट ऑफ इलेक्शन कमिश्नर्स एंड दी नीड एंड दी पॉसिबिलिटी दी डिफिकल्टीज एक्सेट्रा ऑफ ए कोलिजियम अपॉइंटिंग और रिकमेंडिंग इलेक्शन कमिश्नर्स अपॉइंटमेंट्स मिस्टर कृष्णा मूर्ति आपने हाथ खड़ा किया था सर आउटसाइडर कमिंग एज एन इलेक्शन कमिश्नर और chief election commissioner certain countries have really tried in fact in, in uk for example the first chief election commissioner was a retired person or not retired a person from the bbc he was the ceo of the bbc he was the uh, chairman but my only fear is <coughs> it is hope if you can have decide or it can be unanimous on an outsider nothing like that but the risk is that it will be the collegium will be divided if you bring an outsider because as far as the civil servants are concerned you have the background of the person you have the civil so his record speak for themselves but i have no in principle i have no problem an outsider of eminent jurist or an eminent uh, uh, person uh, in various fields can certainly be considered but the problem is in practical implementation of that there may be difficulties but if we can overcome that i have nothing uh, to say that only bureaucrat should be appointed thank you professor ja aap you can certainly leave whenever you like sir there is no question aap kuch concluding remark dena chahenge jaane se pehle uh, sir main mera concluding remark hai ki main aapke aur krishna murti ji ke beech mein hu pul ban jaye to behtar hai na bane to koi bhi coordination ho jaye <laughs> 
जो उनका आइडिया था और जो आपका आइडिया है बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद और आपका बहुत धन्यवाद आने के लिए और आप कृपया अपनी सेहत का ख्याल रखिए थैंक यू वेरी मच ऐश्वर्या जी आप कुछ कहना चाह रही हैं सर मैं ये कहना चाह रही हूँ कि जैसे ब्यूरोक्रेसी की बात कर रहे थे ना कृष्ण मूर्ति सर सर देखिए आप आईआरएस थे और आप भी जानते हैं कि किस तरीके की लड़ाई जो है आई आईआरएस और आईपीएस में चलती है नाम मैं नहीं लूंगी लेकिन हमारे कमीशन में भी ऐसा हो चुका है और बहुत रिसेंटली ऐसा हो चुका है वो जो लड़ाई है ना सर वो इतनी आसान होती नहीं है सॉल्व करना और दिन मतलब डे टू डे जो वो लड़ाई होती है ये बिकॉज दे वो इतना ईजी नहीं होता सर आई वगैरह के लिए टू डाइजेस्ट द फैक्ट दैट एन आई मतलब यू नो सिटिंग ऑन द पोस्ट सो इट्स नॉट दैट इजी कि आप आउटसाइडर वाली जो आपने बात कही है वो सुनने में बहुत अच्छा है कि ये कहते हैं ना कि अभी कई सारे गवर्नमेंट के अंदर भी बाहर की जो लैटरल एंट्रीज जो हुई हैं बट देर इज अ लॉट ऑफ रिजेंटमेंट तो उन लोगों को काम करने में इट्स नॉट दैट इजी फॉर देम टू डू इट अनफॉर्चुनेटली सर आई थिंक जो ये मेजोरिटी वाला जो प्रॉब्लम होता है आई थिंक एनी गवर्नमेंट when it comes with such a brute force it will have repercussions and i think institutions are the first i think a more uh uh parties unfortunately unka ye na kar rahe but कि आप लोग थोड़ा झंडा आप ले रहे हैं हम थैंक यू ऐश्वर्या जी आपकी बात अगेन फिर से बीच में कटती रही तो अभी कुछ मेरा ख्याल है हम लोग अब क्वेश्चन आंसर की तरफ चलें तो ज्यादा बेहतर नंदिनी यस ऐश्वर्या लड़ाइया होती हैं आई एस आई आर एस के बीच में तो ये कहना अच्छा लगता है सुनने में अच्छा लगता है कि आप किसी आउटसाइडर को ले आइए बट काम करना एक आउटसाइडर के लिए उतना इजी होगा नहीं सर क्योंकि पूरा ब्यूरोक्रेटिक सिस्टम जो है इसमें देखिए हम कह सकते हैं कहने को कि कास्टिज्म नहीं होता है would like to point out i did when i say outsider i meant the outside the bureaucracy if you want you can bring an outside person from outside the bureaucracy if there is a consensus on that but on the point of rivalry between services it is true it exists but i can honestly say that and when i was there when i was as an election commissioner as well as when i was a chief election commissioner i had no difficulty in getting along with the colleagues Uh, in spite of the fact it is true that in some cases there is a family rivalry but i had no problem because we most 90% of our decisions were only unanimous the remaining 10% on procedural matters we may have differed but it depends upon the human beings who occupy the post ultimately if they are able to listen to each other and behave in a very uh, cordial manner the service rivalry etc even if it exists can uh, be irrelevant when taking decisions so i do agree with uh, uh, ms paliwal's views that there can be such situations but i think over a period of time i am sure we will be able to get over these difficulties because now there is more proper service and so on but as far as the appointment of an outsider i mean even an outsider from the bureaucracy can be considered provided there is a consensus among the collegium members thank you sir thank you uh, can we have the questions now please uh, is there anything in the constitution of india that mandates the laying down of a well defined procedure and eligibility criteria for making appointments in any body of statutory nature like eci uh, ye question shayad aage bhi hai if not then on what basis the constitutional courts can come into the picture in forcing the hands of the government to lay down such procedures and criteria that would help to guarantee the independence neutrality integrity and also the competence of this great institution 
Mr. Subhashis Roy from Kolkata has asked this question. Would either of the two panelists like to respond to this? Mr. Krishna Murthy. I can talk, but Mr. Taliwal wants, I would give preference to the lady. Ashwarya ji, aap isko respond karengi? Ashwarya ji, you are not going to be able to do it. Check 1, 2, 3, 4. Now, you are not going to be able to do it. You are not going to be able to do it. जो क्वेश्चन है ये एकदम ठीक है कि कुछ ऐसे रूल्स लेड डाउन करने चाहिए कुछ ना कुछ ऐसे नहीं फिर फिर क्या बात हो गई है आप जरा हाँ बोलिए सर लॉ को लेके फिर वही प्रॉब्लम जाएगा कि कौन बनाए कितना बनाया जाएगा और उसको फॉलो कितना किया जाएगा डेट इस वन ऑफ द बेसिक प्रॉब्लम्स इंडिपेंडेंट न्यूट्रलिटी इंटेग्रिटी की जो बात करी गई है ये तो हर इंस्टीट्यूशन के ऊपर इस समय खड़ा मिस्टर कृष्णमूर्ति व्हाट इज योर व्यू no, see, even as it is, there are certain things indicated in the law regarding appointment and terms of conditions of service of the election commissioners. But if you want to amplify it, you can certainly increase some of the uh, requirements for an election commissioner. You can. And there is no harm in it. And if the parliament in its wisdom thinks that there is a need for some change in the uh, uh, prescriptions for qualifying to be appointed, I have personally no problem. Uh, Mr. Subhashi Roy, my response would be uh, that as your question is, there is nothing specific in the constitution as to who should lay down these things or whether these things should be laid down or not. But we have experience of the last 75 years and if the constitution is silent on something, it is uh, not uh, undesirable in the very least that uh, if there is a gap somewhere or something is missing somewhere, even in the constitution, if there is general agreement that can be added into the constitution, the constitution has been amended more than a hundred times. And, uh, you know, the 73rd, 74th amendments have made very, very significant additions to the constitution. So there is nothing in the constitution to say that it should be done or to say that it should not or cannot be done. Uh, but this is also true. Yes, I can Dr. Ambedkar or Dr. Rajin Prasad ki speeches ko quote kiya tha in my article that the institutions depend on the people manning these institutions. Absolutely. And if we have individuals who are of high caliber, high competence, uh, high level of independence, neutrality and integrity. And the system gives them opportunity to display all this. Then the chances of these things coming to the fore will increase. There cannot be a 100% guarantee in, in human affairs ever. <coughs> but we can only hope to increase the possibility of good outcomes. That's all I can say. Uh, can we move to the next question, please? Vartaman mein chunav keval dhan bal walon ke liye rahe gaye hain. Aise mein achche log raadniti ka hissa kaise banenge? Ye Uttarakhand be rozgar sang se prashn aya hai. आपका प्रश्न तो बहुत महत्वपूर्ण है लेकिन पहली बात तो यह कि यह आज जो हमारे वेबिनार का यह टॉपिक है वो इसका वो उसमें यह सवाल नहीं आता है 
लेकिन अच्छे लोग राजनीति का हिस्सा धन बल के ऊपर तो छोड़ने से नहीं होगा और धन बल वालों के लिए ही चुनाव ना रहे इसीलिए चुनाव सुधार की बात हम अक्सर करते हैं जैसा कि इस वेबिनार में भी कई दफ़ा हुआ है और फिर मैंने ही कहा था कि इसको वापस इसके टॉपिक पर लाया जाए सो so, धन बल वालों को कम करने के लिए चुनाव सुधारों की ज़रूरत है जिसकी कोशिश लगातार कम से कम हम लोग तो कर रहे हैं बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद so is this uh, mr krishna murthy do you want to add something here no i only want to add one more thing i'm sure you agree with me the bearer bond system should be abolished that's not a very healthy healthy method <laughs> we of are the political part i know i so know we, you you are, you are we, the same we thing. are petitioners in the supreme court sir on so, that matter so i to- totally so, agree the the it should be more transparent and the bearer bond scheme is absolutely undesirable thank you very much sir thank you uh is was that the last question or is there any other question after this sir no other relevant question this is the this was the last one uh in that case mr krishna murthy would you have any closing remarks we will close the webinar then well as i mentioned as far as the appointment and removal of the election commissioners are concerned i think we have to be made a little more uh, you know uh, equal and if possible the collegium system should be considered for some time whether it works well or not and as far as the selection of people is concerned yes i there should be a panel of names which can be considered it should not be restricted to one at a time they can prepare a panel of names so that you know the 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 persons who are not being considered know that they are being under consideration but be that so it has its own disadvantages i don't deny that but all that i would emphasize is there should be a panel of names so that any standby moment when an appointment is to be made you should not go through the same procedure and take more time for example uh, you know i was appointed after the vacancy was kept more than 8 months when mr gvg krishnamurthy died for, for sorry he retired so for 8 months the post was vacant in my opinion the post should not be kept vacant even for a day the appointment should take place immediately and they must prepare well ahead of the time particularly as far as the retirement is concerned if there is a unknown contingency i agree it may take some time but when you know that a person is retiring why can't you appoint a person well in advance so that there is no vacancy in the election commission because the three members play a very crucial role in taking decisions thank you mr krishnamurthy and uh, i would like to thank all participants who have attended this uh, webinar uh, hum aage bhi isi tarah ke webinar karte rahenge aur hum ummeed karenge ki usme aap log dobara se phir attend karenge bahut bahut dhanyawad thank you very much thank you dhanyawad
We appreciate your visiting our websites adrindia.org and myneta.info and listening to our podcasts and webinars. We appreciate all the support you have given to us. Please continue that support and donate at adrindia.org. Thank you.